Hey guys, it's Ewan with the Air Zoo. It was another massive day in our restoration center as we were taking the FM2 Wildcat out of its rotisserie and onto its own wheels for the first time since World War II. Really, really exciting day for everybody. So let's throw over to Phil, our lead restoration volunteer, to tell us what's going on. Can you explain to the camera briefly about what's uh, what's going on today? Because today's a big day, isn't it? Well, let's go up. It is. It is. We're we're going to have a forklift on the back of the airplane and on the front. Okay. The reason why is when we lower that front down, the rotisserie frame will push the airplane forward. So we got to make sure that we don't pull the um, the tail of the airplane off of this A-frame support before we do that. All right. So what we're going to do now, what the guys are setting up for right now, and come up with a great idea, um, is we're going to lift it up, we're going to get that A-frame out of there entirely, because the airplane actually has to roll forward uh, for to set the tail wheel down on our track or our bridge, okay? And then we'll roll the airplane forward with the tail wheel on that bridge, and then nobody has to be carrying anything, and it'll, it should come off pretty smoothly. The, um, and then we have to, um, when we get here, when the tail wheel comes off of our runway or bridge, okay, then we have to ease it down onto the floor because it's just not going to come off and float down, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. And so, yeah, the, uh, you've heard the eagle has landed on the moon. Well, this is, uh, when we get it down on the floor, I'd like you to take some pictures of it and say the wildcat has landed. All right. All right. And then once we get it down, then we can roll it around whatever. Um, we have papered off the front of the fuselage because we want to... Uh, Paint, start painting a landing gear, doing some paint work on it next Tuesday. Uh, so, but we we're just running through all of our options because, and we'll lift it up with the forklift on the front here. Okay, take the load off of our turnbuckles. Okay, and then we'll low, we'll take the turnbuckles off, and then we'll uh, lower the airplane down slowly. You'll see the shock structs retracting. Okay, up to here. Pretty much, pretty close. And then, um, mm, uh, and then it'll be on its wheels. Once it's, and then we'll just continue to roll it out, probably roll the rotisserie back a little bit out of its way, and we'll turn it and go stage it over in front of the paint booth, if not take it into the paint booth today. So a pretty straightforward and simple plan, but this is a restoration, so anything can Sweet, happen. Yeah. But they started off by lifting up the tail of the aircraft to remove that A-frame support. Okay, now you can, uh, now you can uh, disassemble it. Okay. Okay. And you're gonna want to have more than one, more than a few people. We can't lower this, can we? Not yet. So before doing any more big maneuvers, the guys spent some time just going over the plan, making sure everyone was on the same page, which is always a wise thing to do. As you can see, a lot of people in the restoration center because it was a big day and a lot of people wanted to see all the action. So the guys started to loosen up some of the support and turnbuckles on the rotisserie just to make it easier to remove when the time came. We roll it out of the way, we bring a small forklift in and uh, pick it up and move it outside. So we brought in the second forklift to attach to the front of the aircraft with the idea being that the forklifts would take the weight of the aircraft, we would remove the supporting turnbuckles and then we would lower the aircraft together um, on its own two wheels for the first time since World War II. So pretty simple plan. Um, so once they got the forklift attached, they then removed the turnbuckles and it was time to actually put the aircraft on its own two wheels. So you'll see that the oleo struts, only one of them compressed, one got bound up, um, and you'll see how the team dealt with that problem. Spoiler, with a big hammer. See, it's just bound up, and oil struts tend to do that. That's what I was thinking too. No, I'm, we're just trying to jar this one so it'll start to collapse. All right. 
Uh, give me a, a dead blow hammer. Well, this, um, these air over oil, and of course it's not in there anymore, it's just mechanical, uh, they do tend to hang up, okay? So what I'm trying to do is to shock it to start, because that one compressed, but this one's hung up. There it goes. Okay, now lower it. Did you see it move? That's all right, that one's going to hit the, the stop. Keep it coming down. All right, hold up. All right, now you can take the off. There we go. Hey. All right. Yep, OK. OK, two feet. Two feet. Easy. OK. Wings moving forward. Looking good. More? Easy. More, yeah. It's looking good. A little bit more. We want to get ahead of that uh, set of blocks on the tail. That's good. Okay, set it down all the way. All the way. All the way, and we're going to take. We're going to back you off. Good. All right, come on back, just like you're doing. Yeah, cut it. What year is this? You have to pull the plane with it. All right, cut it around a little bit. Oh, six? Okay. All right, not too, there you go. That's about as much as you can do. That's fine. And that'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Keep coming around. That'll work. All right, hold it up. Okay, that's good. Okay, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll swing the rotisserie that way to swing the tail around. All right. Wait. See, I knew that tail wheel wouldn't spin. That's why I wanted to. Do you have that, uh, can you rotate that tail wheel, control it? Greg, did you have a affair that would go in there? I know, that's what we're looking at doing. Here we go. There we go. Never mind. There you go. Okay. Way to go. Just like an army guy kicking it. So we brought in the other forklift that was holding the tail in the back, we then brought that one round to then lift up that back again and then lower it onto the ground. I want to put, because that'll, that'll turn easier than the... Uh, Instead of putting the tail wheel directly onto the ground, they decided to put it into this little cradle. That just gave the tail wheel a little bit extra maneuverability when we're trying to maneuver it around our pretty tight restoration bay and flight discovery center. So you can see we're lifting up the rear of the plane. We're gonna move away the rotisserie, slide in that little cradle, drop it onto the cradle. And ladies and gentlemen, mission complete, almost. Then we gotta move the Wildcat around and get it into the paint booth. Okay, that's good. Okay, down. come on down. Down easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you good. Come good. on. You're down. Keep coming. Take the slack up. To the railing. And then everybody stand back. Once you get it there. Look, look at this. The Wildcat has landed. Woo! Well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So we rolled the Wildcat into our paint booth because the next step of this restoration is that we're going to paint the landing gear. And there it is in the paint booth, looking absolutely fantastic. Another massive milestone checked off in this FM2 Wildcat restoration. But of course, there's a lot more work to be done and Phil immediately is on to the next task talking about the wing. This guy never stops. If you want to see how our FM2 Wildcat restoration is going, make sure you subscribe to the AirZoo and pay us a visit at airzoo.org.